Good morning, my name is Giacomo Moretti. I am a research fellow at Saarland University, Germany, with the Intelligent Material Systems Laboratory, IMSL, led by Professor Zeleke. I have uh, recently taken on a Marie Curie Fellowship sponsored by the European Commission and today I am going to present the first steps and results of my research project, D-Tune. This is a two-year project focused on dielectric elastomer loudspeakers, which are loudspeakers in which the vibrating diaphragm and the actuator are merged into a soft vibrating polymeric shell. The idea of the project is to systematically investigate the physics of dielectric elastomer speakers with the final goal of designing and developing soft loudspeakers which can be integrated, for example, onto complex structures or textiles. In this presentation, I will first give a brief introduction on loudspeakers based on dielectric elastomers. Then I will uh, set the attention on a particular layout of the DE speaker called the Cone DE loudspeaker. In particular, I will introduce a multi-physics nonlinear model for this system, combining the elastomer electroelastic response and a model for the radiated sound pressure. Using the model, I will present a numerical case study and I will try to explain the relationship between the dielectric elastomer structural dynamics, for example, the DE membrane eigenfrequencies and eigenmodes, and the acoustic response. Finally, I will present some follow-up ongoing activities on which we are currently working as part of the D-Tune project. As you probably know, dielectric elastomers are polymeric dielectrics, which can be used to build variable capacitance actuators that deform when a voltage is applied. A nice feature of the dielectric elastomers is that they can work in a wide range of frequencies, potentially up to the acoustic range. Indeed, prototypes of DE loudspeakers have been built since the early 2000s. Attention has been especially paid to bubble-like speakers, in which the membrane is preloaded uh, pneumatically, and to the development of arrays of small-sized DE speaker units, which can be arranged in a compact manner while still providing large radiation surface. Besides these demonstrators, a very few attempts have been done to model and describe the response and the complex interactions that take place in the E speakers. Even though some nice advancement has been recently done by Garnell from MCA in his PhD work. He basically studied the fluid structure interaction in bubble-like speakers for which he set up accurate continuum finite element models. Modeling a DE speaker is quite complex a problem, as it involves the study of the structural dynamics of the DE membrane, the pressure field generated by the membrane vibrations, but also the coupling effects, which means the loads applied by the acoustic pressure on the elastomer which might influence the dynamics a lot. Today I will mostly talk of modeling of the DE membrane's dynamics and the acoustic field they can generate, for the moment not considering the effect of the acoustic loading. We have also started making 3D vibration measurements with a laser vibrometer and we are getting prepared to make acoustic measurements too. We are looking into a particular DE speaker architecture, which is the cone DE speaker. This is a flat annular membrane covered by electrodes, which is deformed out of plane by an elastic element and takes a shape similar to a cone. A cone DE speaker resembles a traditional cone speaker, except that it does not have the voice coil 
and instead it generates the sound thanks to the deformations created by the voltage. Compared to the bubble-like TE speaker, this layout has the advantage not to require a pneumatic utility to preload the membrane. This layout can be used in different embodiments, for example classical speaker cabinet sets like this prototype that was developed in the past at IMSL. but also potentially entirely polymeric concepts which could be used to develop, for example, conformable speakers or even integrated into textiles. We built a model for the cone D loudspeaker, combining a model of the structural dynamics of the dielectric elastomer actuator domain and a model of the acoustic domain. In this presentation, we just look into axial symmetric deformations of the DE membrane and symmetrical acoustic fields. Although this might seem a strong simplification, uh, in fact, the axial symmetric deformations of the membrane are expected to account for most of the radiated sound pressure. For the DE, we used non-linear visco hyperelastic dynamic models and uh, in particular, to describe the structural dynamics, we used a multiple degrees of freedom approach. We ideally break the membrane into a set of rings and we study the dynamics of each ring. As for the pressure field, we use classical acoustics, namely relic theory. Uh, here, for simplicity, we assume that the, the DE lies in an infinite buffer which reflects back all of the incident waves. In short, the DE membrane structural model takes the voltage profile as the input and returns the membrane velocity and acceleration at different points. The kinematics are described by the location of the ring elements for which we calculate the stretches and the dynamics is formulated in terms of the Lagrange equations, assuming a Kelvin Voigt viscous model with hyperelastic springs. You can find all of the details in our paper in the conference proceedings. The acoustic model uses the acceleration profile over the membrane to predict the pressure field. The acoustic pressure is calculated through the so-called Releg integral, here in the discretized form, and it depends on the time history of the normal acceleration of the ring elements through a convolution kernel, which basically accounts for the sound traveling distance between a point on the membrane and a receptor point, and the pressure attenuation due to the distance between source and receptor. We implemented some simulations on a hypothetic speaker with the dimensions shown in the figure, made of silicon DE. In practice, these features are similar to those of the loudspeaker prototype developed at IMSL in the past. We used a rather coarse discretization. Despite these and the relative simplicity of the model, these simulations make it possible to understand some interesting behaviors of the speaker, as you will see in the next slides. First of all, we use the linearization of the membrane dynamic model with the aim of determining the mode shapes and the natural frequencies. As you can see, the first mode renders the conical deformation of the actuator which is used in all low frequency applications of this layout. The other modes, in contrast, involve a lateral deformation of the membrane. Because the mass of the central disk is much larger than the mass of the membrane, in all of the higher order modes, the central disk is still and only the membrane moves. Some of these mode shapes are similar to the known transversal mode shapes that one can find in an annular flat membrane with fixed rims. There are other mode shapes which account for the radial displacements, 
but these do not seem to influence the acoustic response very much. Using again the linearized version of the model, we computed the acoustic frequency response for our cone speaker in the load mid range. This represents the sound pressure level in logarithmic scale generated by the speaker at different frequencies for sinusoidal excitations with bias of 1.5 kV and amplitude of 200 volts. The acoustic response is all but flat, as one would expect in an ideal speaker, and of course it is highly affected by the DE structural modes, which generate a sequence of peaks. This is a rather structural characteristic for the speakers, because even assuming to change the dimensions and the parameters of the system reasonably, still the acoustic range is most likely be populated by many high-order break-up modes of the DE membrane. And this is something one has to put up with when designing and controlling DE speakers in general. We isolated the contribution of the pumping mode, that is, the piston motion associated with the displacements of the central disc of the cone. Interestingly, the pumping mode only accounts for a relatively small fraction of the total level, which instead is mostly influenced by the structural membrane vibrations, with the only exceptions, of course, of the very low frequencies. We then used the complete nonlinear model to quantify the harmonic distortions generated by a DE loudspeaker. Harmonic distortions are due to both the nonlinear quadratic dependency of the dynamics on the input voltage and the material and geometry nonlinearities. For periodic sound signals, these distortion can be quantified in terms of the weight of the higher order harmonics with respect to the fundamental harmonic. We compared the harmonic distortions associated with two different driving strategies. First, a sinusoidal excitation, which of course is expected to generate distortions due to these quadratic nonlinearity, and then a square-rooted sinusoidal voltage, which instead compensates for the quadratic dependency. Here you can see, for a couple of frequencies, the total harmonic distortion obviously increases with the excitation amplitude, which also affects, of course, the level, the volume of the sound output. The distortion is much higher for a sinusoidal voltage, especially at low frequency. The square-rooted sinusoid input also generates a certain harmonic distortion due to the geometric and material nonlinearities. Based on the simulation, we tried to render the sound of the speaker with the two different driving strategies. To make an example, now I will let you hear three sounds in sequence. The first is a 400 Hz pitch generated using a sinusoidal input. Then the same pitch generated with a square rooted sinusoid. And finally, the ideal 400 Hz sound. Both sounds generated with a DE are clearly distorted compared to the monochromatic case, but as you could hear, the second is slightly cleaner, even though here the difference is not so sharp. This was, of course, an extreme case with very large excitation amplitude of 1 kV. Besides the model that I have presented, of which you can find uh, details in the paper, we are currently working on an experimental characterization of the mode shapes and vibration response of cone DE membranes. To do so, we are using a 3D laser vibrometer, which allows us to visualize all of the complex mode shapes of the membrane, not only the axial symmetrical modes that I've shown you so far. We are indeed already extending the model to the three-dimensional case, 
trying to predict the mode shapes and the natural frequencies with the finite element electroelastic models of the dielectric elastomer. And we are using numerical codes also to evaluate the effect of the acoustic loading on the membrane natural frequencies. In conclusion, at IMSL in Germany, we have started working on dielectric elastomer loudspeakers with the idea of moving forward towards the development of soft, fully polymeric speakers. So far, we have started modeling the dynamic response of the e-speakers, which is a complex problem that involves nonlinear electroelastoacoustic interactions. But we also started testing these in the practice and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make you listen something soon. I take this chance to tell you that our group at IMSL is editing a special issue on the electric elastomer actuator systems on MDPI actuators. The lead editor is Professor Zeleke. If you are interested and would like to publish your work here, do not hesitate to contact us and ask for any information. Thanks for the attention. Feel free to contact me if you have questions and uh, follow the updates of the DTune project.